And uh, you can judge from the smile on my face that India has triumphed down under with an amazing win in Perth. They have just taken the final wicket and that has resulted in a commanding 295-run victory in the first test of the Border Gavaskar Trophy. Who would have thought this would have been possible just three days ago on day one when we were bowled out for 150. Let me go across to Karishma without any further ado. Karishma, this is a stunning turnaround by the Indian team after what had happened in the first innings, being bowled out for just 150. Coming into the series with a lot of questions, a lot of pressure after the humiliation to the Kiwis at home. But there could not have been a more emphatic turnaround around a more emphatic victory against Australia at Fortress Perth in that to the first test of a series. There are so many firsts I can even think of while even telling that sentence. Well, yes, absolutely, Ritanshu. This has been a historic victory, a massive win by 295 runs. And Captain Jaspreet Bumrah has led from the front eight wickets in this entire test match. In fact, if we talk about the three seamers, Mohammad Siraj, Harshit Rana and uh, Jaspreet Bumrah together, they have taken 17 wickets in this uh, particular test match. So, of course, the Indian uh, team has been on fire when we talk about the Perth test match. Yashasvi Jaiswal, uh, what an innings from him, scoring 160. 61 Virat Kohli of course he loves Perth and he's shown it with this uh, century as well there were a lot of question marks surrounding KL Rahul but he also scored very very valuable uh, 77 runs and remember we are talking about a test match in which we did not have our captain uh, Rohit Sharma Shubman Gill was injured there was no Jadeja no Ashwin no Shami and we've still gone on to win the Perth test match with a massive massive margin of 295 uh, runs on day 4 itself so this is going to be a a big, big uh, confidence booster for the Indian team. Rohit Sharma has already joined uh, the squad. And remember, Ritanchu, a very interesting uh, fact here that India has never lost the Border Gavaskar uh, series if they have won the first match. So hopefully that winning streak continues and we qualify for the World Test Championship final on our very own. All right, Karishma, thanks a lot for joining us. Let me quickly go across to my guests who are also with me. And also, this is a show where you are the guest as well, my dear viewer, because if you want to call us with a question or with a congratulatory message, do call us on the number you can see flashing at the bottom of your screen, 01206634616. Let me also bring in my guests, Vaidam Jayashankar and Nikhil Sharma, sports journalist, and also today, if nothing else, Indian cricket fans who are joining me at this point. Thank you both, Vaidam. Starting with you, what a turnaround. On day one, when we were all bowled out for 100, and 50. I'll be the first to admit I was one of those classical pessimist fans in the guy up to three <laughs> matches we have already lost to New Zealand and this is a start in Perth and uh, we were looking at a route and unbelievable that we have won by 295 runs. Yeah, good afternoon. You hit the nail on the head really. It's not just you. I don't think anybody really believed that once you're all out for 150 that you could turn yeah. it around and win by 295 runs. But what is very important is on a long tour, it's very important to start with a victory. If you don't start with a victory, let's say you get a defeat on a long tour, then things can go south very quickly. You know, there could be bickerings within the team, the media would do a lot of postpartum, and, uh, you know, they start picking all sorts of, uh, you know, the small mistakes that get, gets enlarged, things can go wrong, the team can come apart, the morale of the team could get affected. And the whole tour could become, become very bitter. You know, small incidences will be blown up. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very difficult to have a long tour. If you start with a defeat, and when we are all out for 150, I was wondering if, you know, we are going to be uh, into a long winter of discontent. But uh, luckily, uh, I wouldn't say luckily, really, that the Indian team turned it around brilliantly, especially the first day. Nobody expected them to come back so strongly. And the minute they came back so strongly, you know, the pressure was all the time on the Aussies. You know, you, at 150, you could have been bowled out for 150. They could have run up a lead of 200 runs. And on day one, you could have been under pressure on a long tour. But instead, at the end of the first day, the pressure actually was on the Aussies. And from then on, we built. But like I said, you know, if you, if you look at the uh, team performance as such, the whole lot of people, it's not just one or two, everybody in the team has contributed substantially yeah. and made this possible. So it means that the entire team believes that each one of them can contribute and make a fighting contribution to the team and stay in the fight. And that's the important thing on a long tour. 
Indeed. Nikhil, I mean, a lot of, I mean, yes, as Vedam pointed out, this is a team effort, but I want to highlight the man we were just showing on the screens with Pat Cummins with the trophy, and that is the captain, Jasprit Bumrah, here. The fact is that on day one, when we were down and out 150 here, Jasprit Bumrah stepped up not just as the lead bowler of a very inexperienced pace attack, he also stepped up as captain. There was a lot of criticism initially leveled against his decision to bat first, but he read the conditions perfectly. He realized that this would be a pitch which would have demons only in the first one or one and a half days. Then it would ease out and the team that would effectively bat on day two towards the end or day three will have the advantage. That is exactly how it played out. We have all been aware of Jasprit Bumrah's magic with the ball. But to me, the revelation of this match has been his tactical brilliance as a captain. Well, Ratanshu, not so long back, uh, you know, maybe two weeks back, we were on, you know, probably a primetime show talking about how uh, naive India were in, you know, in that loss against uh, the Kiwis. But I'd say not just Jasprit Bumrah, kudos to the coach as well to have, uh, you know, rallied the boys around. Uh, kudos yeah. to Gautam Gambhir as well. You know, credit where it's due. We should not be the only ones always, uh, you know, putting the blame on the coach. I think, uh, uh, believe you me, if I told you that, uh, you know, when Nitish Reddy got those 40-41 runs along with 7-8 runs from uh, the bottom, uh, uh, you know, uh, number 8 and 9 as well, I think 9 and 10 maybe, uh, Ashwin and uh, I think Siraj got those runs as well, or Bumrah did. I did say that this this match is far from over, but I did not expect Australia to be bundled out I think for, it was Sundar. for 100, yeah, 104. Nikhil. Sorry? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, it was Washington Sundar, I think. You were, yeah, you were talking about that yes. ma well, map, that yes. partnership at the, the lower half eight. of yes. the innings. Yes. It was yes. Washington Sundar, yeah. Yes, yes. So that 50 runs essentially, uh, you know, while it may look very less, uh, you know, considerably when you when you look at the, the second inning score, but I thought they were crucial. They gave confidence possibly to the bowlers, and when we got our tail up in the you know the in the last half of that uh, um, of that day when uh, Bumrah really got going, I thought this match is gone. Didn't I? Didn't imagine that the second innings would be so easy. But if you if you watch the the pitch, you know there were cracks coming up. There's been a, a whole host of stories around how tough the yeah. pitch is. So I think primarily the think tank has to be lauded for not just, you know, I think a lot of us were scared within uh, Ritanshu when, when everybody was going. A lot of us didn't believe, but some of them did and kudos to them. And uh, to Jaspreet Bhumra, I, you know, uh, uh, I was speaking to a friend, um, uh, you know, uh, and we were talking about how clear and concise he was in his press conference as well. Uh, Rohit Sharma, I think, is a little reticent. He's not just, you know, he doesn't enjoy possibly that process too much. But as a fresh captain, I thought uh, Jaspreet Bumra spoke very clearly. And that clarity was not just on his bowling. It was also in his captainship. Kudos to him and to the think tank as well. Hitanshu? In indeed, indeed. Vedam, now... I'm going to ask a very uncomfortable question at this point to both you and Nikhil at this point. Given that Jaspreet Bumrah, I mean, yes, credit should not go to just Jaspreet Bumrah, as Nikhil pointed out, should go to the team management, to all the players. It has been an all-done show. But given, and you pointed out, Vedam, that it's all about momentum. And in the first test match, we have started with a win. It's important to keep the momentum over a two-month-long series. There's a big gap till the next test as well. In order to build up the momentum, should Jasprit Bumrah stay on as captain for the rest of the series here? If not permanently, there is well format here because let's be honest here, he has not put a foot wrong as captain here. And to my common layman's mind, it doesn't make sense to disrupt the momentum or disrupt the change at the top. Well, I don't really think so because he was appointed as vice captain and he should stay as vice captain. If Rohit is ready and he should take he should take the lead and she should captain the side. It's not that Rohit has not led earlier and led the team to victories. So I don't think that's yeah. a good move at all. You know, unless the move comes from Rohit itself. Otherwise, you will start getting camps, you know, instead of having a team, you will have various teams within the team. You'll have a Bumrah camp, a Rohit camp, which is not good for cricket. You know, you are actually trying to create dissensions. That's not good. It's better to have them together and stick to the old formula. Uh, Rohit Sharma was appointed captain. The selectors knew that he was not available for the first test and maybe even the second test. That's what they said earlier, but he is already landed in Australia. I think he should get back his captaincy and uh, I'm sure the team will look up to him. After all, he's just won the World Cup for them. 
they look up to him and uh, maybe he has a ready made uh, deputy there he can fall back on the deputy and ask him uh, how things are going but uh, i think cricket is very set because it is the captain's job to really run the show you may have a coach you may have a whole lot of others also to help out and be part of the think tank but it's the captain who makes the crucial calls on the field of play and i think while bumrah has been spot on in each and everything uh, there is also a lot of trust and faith placed in a captain like uh, rohit sharma bumrah also had done it's fantastic that he is one now mm. but also had done he was an unknown factor he's proved himself and maybe in the coming years you have a ready made captain but uh, to the appointed question i would say no we should have uh, rohit sharma back as captain and bumrah will be his deputy no but see here's the reason it's not it's not a nija question that i'm putting and nikhil let me get you in this point as vedam pointed out the transition is inevitable there have been rohit sharma and virat kohli the time is ticking on them there have been questions raised over the long term form i know kohli scored a century here but one sort of doesn't make a summer there have been questions leveled over whether it's time to usher in the next phase of indian cricket at this point the good thing we've got from this match is that we have found a ready made uh, we have found a perfect man to step in once rohit sharma goes on there were questions raised over whether fast bowlers make good captains i think both the captains in this match have proven to be uh, proven that age wrong so if a transition has to be effected why not make it now when the iron is hot So, uh, Ritanshu, uh, you know, three points to it. Point number one, you know, do fast bowlers make great captains? Well, Indian cricket, the revolution of Indian cricket came about when a fast bowler was the captain. So, I yeah. don't think anybody should have that doubt uh, as far as uh, Indian cricket is concerned. You know, the man at helm, a couple they won us the World Cup. That's where you know the real genesis of of this. Uh, cricket revolution in india started point number 2 before i get to the question of you know ushering and i was just thinking about it you know think with the ipl auctions as the background you have jaspreet bumrah surya kumar yadav and rohit sharma three in three of india's captain as as on date for you know both white ball and red ball and yet last year the captain that they had was hardik pandya so that team definitely does not have a, a shortage of you know options for captains as far as india is concerned look um, you know uh in sport i think what what's very important is that we have we have uh you know a quorum and the quorum states that for the tour and you know once you've been you've appointed a person as as uh, the red ball captain or the white ball captain for the indian cricket team for a particular format as long as he's available and he's been picked and he's injury free uh if he's going to play he should be the captain if at the end of the series or you know you uh, for some reason we believe that rohit sharma is not capable to carry on as the captain we should look for an option but at least for the boss uh, border gavaskar trophy once he is in and he'll be available for the pink ball uh, test um, and it presents a very good option for india you know i i have a feeling kl rahul will go down the order uh, you know if shubman gill is uh, available that number 3 slot will become available for him as well uh, we have a very good team and in rohit sharma we have a exceptional captain yes he, both of them rohit and virat have had the best uh, of times as far as red ball is concerned for quite some time but i do believe uh, you know when you have a player like rohit sharma not just captaincy as a player as well in team is richer and uh, we are hoping for the best brilliant test uh, hoping for a great uh, series from the indian co all right we have a caller joining us at this point shakti calling us from coimbatore shakti go ahead and have your say from shakti from coimbatore hello yes please go hello ahead. so i am shakti from coimbatore next match it same squad in india are playing the match uh, rohit sharma come from the match not good form in rohit sharma in recent times kl rahul is good form the recent times and go to the middle order is rohit kl rahul not confidence but opening what confidence and play and ssv jaiswal is good batting next match will be the same squad rohit sharma is not is good player but not in form it jaspreet bumrah lead in next match in same squad with three right. points of you sir 
I mean, Shakti, thank you for calling in. We get your point, and that's why I'm putting these questions across to both Nikhil and Vedant. Vedant, Vedam, you heard what Nick, uh, our caller was saying. Obviously, yes, team management and choice of a captaincy cannot be done on the basis of fan sentiment, which is very fickle and a very fair weather sentiment, especially in Indian cricket. Yeah. But the point he made, KL Rahul was in good nick as an opener. He has been... The odd job man asked to open, asked to come in at number five, asked to come in at number three, be to keep wickets if necessary. Uh, if you have, uh, if Shubhan Gill and Rohit Sharma both come into the team at this point for the next test, who would you have them replace in the current team? Yeah, uh, rather than uh, calling him an odd man, I would ta I would use the tag versatile. He's an amazingly versatile cricketer. And we need to, at some point of time, acknowledge that not everybody has got that gift, and he has got that rare yeah. gift. Having said that, you know uh, he has a point when he said that both these uh, openers are playing well, and I I feel we should continue with them as openers. It's not that Rohit has uh, opened the batting all the time; he's also batted in the middle order, and he can be comfortable there. Uh, I feel yes, Rohit can come at number six, perhaps if Shubham Gill has to come at uh, number three. Otherwise, Rohit wow. can come at number three and Shubham Gill can come at number four. Otherwise, I think... Yes, that, that's a very get... radical suggestion indeed. And I am running short of time, so I quickly need to get in Nikhil. Nikhil, same question in, in 30 seconds. What would be the changes you would make in the Team eleven if you get in Rohit and Shubman? No, if you would the get them three, in. Number three position is simple. You know, uh, we will have uh, Shubham, Shubman Gill coming in. But I do believe KL Rahul is much more comfortable against an older ball, against an easier, uh, you know, it's it's not fair. Also, Rohit Sharma, okay. his bulk of his runs and his transformation in tests has come as opener. So he comes in maybe Dhruv Jurel, unlucky, but uh, he might be going out. I feel that's where uh, KLR will bat. Uh, so, and Rohit takes up his automatic opening position. Okay. Instead so of fascinating. KLR, so down. much to unpack at this point, as you say. <laughs> Winning often takes care of a lot of problems, but in this case, sometimes it gives you more problems of its own. But it's a good problem to have. It's good to yes. have everyone in the team back in form. It's good to have the morale up. And one couldn't have expect to a better start. Vedam Jayashankar and Nikhil, thank you so much for joining us with your views. We will be discussing this thing at length later on during the day as well.